feature of a good facial rig is the rig's ability to mimic the existence of a skull underneath the uh, head. So I'm going to talk today about how we can do that using a NURBS surface um, to drive the translate and rotate values of this joint. Um, we could, of course, you know, do the set-driven key approach where we set a, uh, a key here and a key here uh, to indicate the up and, and the lowering and raising of the brow. But we'll get a very linear motion from that. It's going to cut through the head. Um, we could, of course, set more set driven keys or we could uh, edit that curve. But um, I think using a nerve surface is a little easier and you get some interesting effects from that. So to set this up, I've uh, created a joint and I've uh, placed that joint oriented the joint. I then uh, have created a NURB surface to use as my skull in this case. So there we go. So this is the skull area above the, the brow here. And, and then I've selected that surface and go into my uh, dynamics menu and hair. I create a hair system. Um, working on a way to just create a follicle and attach it to that surface and so I don't have to deal with the creating an entire hair system and, and having all that in place. But this this technique is rather new to me too. I was trying to to I was playing I've been playing with this idea for a while and, and I know people have done it and that it worked and I've even worked with some systems that used a nerve surface. Um, but I was having a little trouble, you know, getting exactly what I want until Brad from Rigging Dojo said to me follicles and uh, so that was just the other week and, and I'm uh, just playing with this this system now so in this case I created a hair system uh, I set it so that it only had uh, three follicles in the in the uh, U parameter and I'll share it here yeah U count and then V count it was so U count was three V count is one um, and I created them as static and that sort of thing so uh, if you look at these follicles now and we'll select one here. It has an attribute, uh, two attributes actually, that we're going to be concerned with throughout this entire. Two attributes we're going to be concerned with are the parameter U and parameter V. And what these attributes do is they actually cause the follicle to slide along the nerve surface here. You see, that's up and or up and down and then side to side, of course. So there you go. And right now what I've done is I've parent constrained this joint to that follicle so that uh, I'll have a joint following the follicle here. Thus the joint will also slide along the surface. And then you can go ahead and you know create your um, cr control objects. So I've already you know, made a NURB circle here and I've snapped to this and frozen transformations and all that on it. So, so what we're going to want to do now is have the translate Y and the translate Z of this uh, control object curve drive the parameter U and parameter V values of our follicle. Um, one problem we're going to run into that or one problem we'll run into with that right away is if we look at our follicle, the parameter U and parameter V values here, I'm sorry, I'm just break connections. I set this up once already. So uh, they start at 0.177 and 0.24. Our controller is going to start at 0 and 0. So immediately it's going to zero those out when we make a direct connection between the attributes. And that'll push our follicle someplace where we don't want it to be. So we're going to need to create two plus minus average nodes to offset those values. So what we'll do is we'll take the current U value of this follicle and we'll pump that into the input 1D value of the um, plus minus average node. Then we'll take the translate X value of the control object and put that into the parameter, or I'm sorry, the input 1D index 1 of that plus minus average node. And what that's going to do is then subtract uh, that def that default position, that default U value from uh, zero to start with. So we'll end up with exactly the uh, the position we want. So 
this is a lot of connecting of attributes and honestly I, I don't like doing that very much so I went ahead and scripted this out and I think it makes it a little easier to walk through the steps as well so here I'm using Python scripts so I had to import the uh, Maya um, uh, Python implementation and I import Maya commands as commands to do that so uh, then what I'm going to do is uh, create a couple of variables. Uh, one is going to hold the u, u uh, parameter of the uh, NURBS follicle shape, and then the other one is going to hold the V parameter of the uh, NURBS follicle shape. So we'll go ahead and run this, and you'll see up here, uh, it's probably very tiny by now, but. Uh, uh, we have like 0.17 and then you know, 0.239 so um, those are our two values so what we're going to do is take this u parameter value of 0.176 and we're going to put that into the plus minus average nodes input 1d index 0 and that's what this is saying is set attribute or setting this attribute to this value right so we do that and then we do the same thing with the v value and then we're going to uh, connect the translate x and the translate y's. So translate x is going into the input 1d index 1 of the uh, the first plus minus average node and then translate y is going to go into the input 1d index 1 of the second plus minus average node. So we go ahead and connect our adders up. And then uh, the last thing we're going to want to do is take the outputs of those plus minus average nodes and crank them back into the parameter u and parameter v of the follicle. So we go ahead and use connect adder again. There's output 1d and we're putting it into the parameter u value and then uh, plus minus average node 2 output 1d into the uh, v parameter. So go ahead and connect those up. Close script editor, oh, channel box still hanging out here, sorry. Yeah, lots of stuff, okay. So we'll select our control object and go ahead and start moving that around. You see our joint following this way and you get the nice rotation out of it. It's a lot of fun. And then uh, here you'll see a problem, right? Uh, this problem can be solved in a few different ways. Uh, what I did here is I had a group node I already created and so we could probably just do something where we uh, rotate that group node in this case I don't know we're looking at uh, the y-axis so we could just try flipping that and see if that works so we'll set it to 180 and you know we get some weirdness there like I said this is new to me too so any of these parts here that you can simplify uh, if you have any good ideas about that just please let me know but then yeah, you see there you end up with something that works fairly well. So, play around with that, and uh, I hope that helps someone out there. Uh, I had trouble figuring some of this stuff out, so uh, good luck, and uh, let me know any sort of comments or suggestions you have.